believer has tendency to fail. Our failure is a product of ignorance. In Christ, that's where you are. Because in the preaching of the gospel, our identity is revealed. Father, thank you for the honor in bringing your word to these great people of yours. Father, we thank you. No man taketh his honor to himself has given to him of you. Lord, thank you for the privilege of learning, the privilege of coming to mastering your word and your person, which is called Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray in this few minutes that we have, have known to my vocal call to bring life and communicate revelation to everyone. I ask that I have to be open and circumcised, Lord, to bring, Lord, to lead, to hear the word of God. We ask, O oh God, let no life go back the same. Thank you for the blessing. We give you the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Can we hear a loud amen? amen? So we began a series and we began the teaching talking about the workings of grace in the believer. And then the workings of grace in the believer. I had someone praying, says, when you got born again, the grace of God is already inside of you. But it's a grace that is at work to the believer to bring productivity and to bring tangibility. Amen, somebody? So grace, and I said, the reason why I'm teaching this, many believers are born again, but they can't acknowledge the grace of God in their life. And I've said during this series that when grace is not at work, sir, you will live a frustrated life. One of the things that cure frustration is grace. If grace is not there, even if they give you 100 million, you will still suffer. Because grace is an enabler. He enables us. Amen, somebody? Grace enables us. In Titus 2, 11, he said, The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Do what? Teaching us. to what? Deny ungodliness. So, grace is a teacher. And we define grace that grace is not a phrase. Grace is what? A person. And grace is described in the person of Christ. Hallelujah. Grace is described in the person of Christ. And many through the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament, they walk on the premises of grace. The Bible says, and Noah find grace. You see, grace at work in the life of Noah. See, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Noah was not saved because he was a good person. Noah was saved because of the grace of God. You see, that's why a grace you've not acknowledged can never be at work for you. We appropriate the grace of God by acknowledging, Philemon 1, 6, acknowledging every good thing that is we are in you, that is we are in Christ. Every now I then, as I step into life, I began to meet network, meet people, I began to realize that the grace of God is what is at work in me. What you don't value, you can't appropriate. It is out of that value because grace produces. If you carry the grace of God, it will produce resources. It will produce acceptance. It will produce so many things. You see, not because you see you are not poor because you came from a poor home. You are poor because you've not been willing to prepare the grace of God on your life. You can be a drummer, a keyboardist, and a granite seller and buy a decent car and drive because grace multiplies people's life. Are you listening to what I'm saying now? You can be that person that they keep at the back of life and grace can shift you from where you are you know some of you let me just warn you maybe you are serving somebody stop murmuring leave them don't don't is it because i know people use people but don't murmur just keep serving because i was there i've served all kind of person i've served the one that told me you're stupid i've told the one that told me you are mad i've served the one that told me all kind of stuff but today some of them don't stand where i stand you know why because that service was a training to my person and if they don't cost me i won't be normal Somebody just look at me now and I saw you. Because you say, hi, I mean cost you. They cost me. They say, you're a fool. Am I a fool now? No. Yeah, it is the teaching. The learning. Because when somebody say you are a fool, the way you respond, you become really foolish. But when you didn't respond, you know you're not a fool. But the person has the privilege to use that word on you because at that time you are what? A servant to him. You know who pay you control your hope, you know? Who pay you control you? Because the people are serving not because it's your right. It's a privilege. You didn't hear what I said? Yes, sir. Many of us frustrate and abuse the grace of God for our lives. We don't value the grace. The driver is driving you, conk his head. Yeah. One, the two of you will just die together. 
because he will just make up his mind and say well uh, i don't tire and then he just drive and enter flyover and then you are dead and they ask him why did he die the driver drive he didn't drive he's the boss that has made the driver because there are some drivers that just take a decision in split second make me an oga and madame die together and your life has ended you must learn to treat people in life. The grace of God must be appreciated in your life. Are you listening to what I'm saying now? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 4. Is there such trust to have we what? Through Christ to God's word. Then the next verse. Then he said, Not that we are sufficient of our word, of ourselves, for our sufficiency is of what? Now, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. Have you read through the scripture where the Bible says nothing is given to a man, nothing a man has except is given to him of God? So where is the boasting? Ephesians 2 9 says, Where is boasting? It's excluded. You know why you are saucy? You know why you become arrogant? You know why you talk to people rudely? You've never appreciated the grace of God. Some of you, as we teach new creation and teach grace, all your money that comes, you eat everything. No, it doesn't matter when I eat it. That's why your, your, your beards and your hairs and everything is looking eating. It's eating because you're eating money. Eating money that you should give up. Do you understand? Ladies and gentlemen, it's not every money that is yours. Some money must go out from your pocket. Yes, and when the one that is ought to be God, you eat it, something will be happening to your life. Let me teach you this. Please don't look at me. Do you know giving God money can give you healthy? Mm -hmm. Can keep you healthy? Yes. It's, it's in my life. They, it, where we're coming from, they taught us when we give, we even document our giving. Yeah. I write, Daddy Ken, you give 20,000. Last three weeks you didn't pay your money. You must put dash and dash and dash. Some of you here, two years, you've never given God money. So your dash is everlasting dash. <laughs> Are you seeing the mercy of God? So imagine if God is dealing with us based on qualification. Nobody in this world, including me, will stand. It's the grace of God at work in our lives. But the question is, Paul said, do not frustrate the grace of God. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, can we put it there? He said, he said in Galatians 2 20, he said, he said, the life I live, he said, for I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but the life I live now, the life that I live, or the life that I live, he said, the life which I live now, I live in the flesh, but through, he said, the life is by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself what? For me. The life I have is the giving of Jesus. Then the next verse now said, because very important, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Look at the NIV. I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law, it is in vain because nobody can live righteous by the law. Yeah. You break one, you break all. And the last time I checked, you just sigh over a brother that God bless. Mm. Look at it in, in, in the NIV. He said, do not treat the grace of God do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. You know, you know how you value something, you protect it. Yeah. Now, your value is a product of knowing the worth of a thing. Yeah. Because the moment the worth of a thing is not known, you don't have value for it. True. It is the worth of a thing that introduces value. Yeah. So, first of all, believers need to realize what is the worth of grace? What's the worth of God for you? What's the worth of what He has done on the cross? Now, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus didn't just die and didn't just give you salvation. He's still working in you to be better. Yes, sir. He wants you to be better, so he should not just give you salvation. That's why he said, said, he said there are better things that accompany salvation. True. Are you listening to what I'm saying now? Better things accompany salvation. So stop that philosophy. Stop that rubbish. We are to tell you when you are born again, you should wear, we should, you, you should wear a gun or suit. We are always teaching all those things. You should wear, you should wear a shirt without iron in it. Where are you learning all those religious from? We are a big cap and a big gun and say that's Christianity. Those are men's desire. Never in the, in the scripture. That's why when you wear good stuff, you criticize them. Because you are still under the old school. You criticize them when you wear good things. Is it by force? And I can realize something. There's something I just realized. The people that is criticizing good things, they even like it. Mm -hmm. True. True. They like it if you dash them, that should they wear it. <laughs> but because they've criticized me, if you dash them, when they wear it, it will not fit them. <laughs> 
teaching good now. You don't fit them. I've been delivered many years ago. God delivered me and set me free from all of this, this, this myopic Christian life. We think globally. We want to touch the world. This is the world. I don't live in this city. I live in the world. Are you listening to what I'm saying now? The grace of God is global. He does, he's, not, he's not limiting anybody. You can transit anywhere. Thank God for even the, 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 the gadget and the mobile stuff we have. You can reach the world all over the place. Are you listening to what I'm saying now? I preach. I, I can stay in my house and do a conference for all class of people. Yeah. Why? Because of where the world is. Up to now, you know, and listen, let's just look at me. You know what? See, when you begin to call people and advise people over and over, I have realized something, though. You can't advise people to do what they don't have. The reason why we're advising to buy CD and buy books, your thought, you, your life remains where your thought reach. You can't grow beyond your thought. You see, a pastor, he cannot function, he cannot do ministry. That's where he has ended. If you want to grow more, you must research for the next level. Yeah. Teaching good now. Research for the next level. The other day I teach a church and I ask them, I want, you to, I want to give an assignment before I come the next day morning. I said, go and look for a millionaire if you never met one. Ask them how does millionaire behave? How does people behave? Because they don't behave the same. They don't behave the same. There's a different way of reasoning. It's a different way. People don't just drop from heaven. They, they grow from earth into the life they live don't treat it meaninglessly because the grace of god is very important what you don't value and you treat meaningless can never make impact in your life hallelujah so we saw the grace of god that the grace of god was functioning from the old testament to the new testament it was reaching out to everybody raising men by grace grace another word for grace the bible says it's an unmerited favor it's an end undeserved work undeserved blessings of god nobody is qualified for the blessing but grace give it to you it's not deserve. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Undeserved favor of God. That's the grace of God at work in the believer. And it's at work. After salvation, there is a grace on you. That grace is not to frustrate you. That grace is to help you. Enable in what you do. The grace or the, 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 the flavor of the grace of God make people make you become a center of attraction. And it's, a, it's something you must realize. There is a place to acknowledge. And you must be deliberate about life. Listen to me. Listen. God wants to bless you. God has already blessed you. We saw that in Ephesians 1 verse 3. The blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who had blessed us. He had blessed us. With all spiritual blessings. In First Peter, Second Peter chapter 1. He said he has made available all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of God. Some of us do business. Some of us are CEOs. Some of us are civil servants. Some of us are doing different kind of stuff. But we never believe on the grace of God. That the grace of God can take you from point A to Z. Where you've never. Grace transport. In fact... Where grace is at work, rules are suspended. There are no rules, there are no policies. Rules are suspended. Where grace is at work. Rules are suspended. It's not compulsory, you must be 40 before life happens to you. It's not compulsory, you must be 40 before you build a house. It's not compulsory. It's the grace of God at work. I'm teaching you so that it can be conscious. You can be conscious of what you do. As a pastor, you need to be conscious of the grace of God. That in this ministry work, I'm not in it because I'm qualified. People like us are not good enough. Now, you know what I'm talking about. We don't know good enough. We don't even go to a better school. We, we, didn't, we didn't go. We, we didn't have the opportunity. No training, no money to go to school. But yet, when grace came, grace began to teach. And we began to have an opportunity to be school. Did you understand? We are not opportunity. We want to dash you school fees. We don't have it, but we are just in church that's why sometimes you are even poor but you are playing with a god that is rich yeah. some of you are playing with the god saying by us i come from no 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 you don't know you because the moment you know you and you know who rich how rich god is the bible says he that knew no poverty became real poor for my sake that i through his poverty might be what rich i knew i'm poor so i i work with a rich god so i decide to be a slave to a rich god for inquiries, please call plus two three four eight zero three nine five seven one six three four plus two three four eight one eight seven one eight 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 eight.